Hello, it's system overview time. So, before I start, there are a few people out there, actually quite a lot, who think they know me a bit. Maybe know where I'm coming from, maybe know what I think, maybe think they know what I don't like and what would be my least favourite gaming system. Betcha they're wrong. <laughs> the name of the manufacturer does not begin with N. It begins with T. Can you guess yet? I'll, I'll stop teasing you. My absolute least favourite gaming system is that. It is the Tiger Gamecom. Tiger Electronics. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you everything on this or just how bad it is. Oh, it's, it's, let me clarify. There are some very, very good things about this. Um, I'll start at the start, I guess. Obviously, it is a handheld. It's 8-bit. It was made in 1997, and that's worth keeping in mind um, when you see the capabilities of it. It is not your standard handheld. I can't. It's got a stylus, and it's got a touch, touch screen. Now... You'll, a lot of you will be now used to touch screens with maybe with a stylus on the DS or a really the, the capacitive type that you get on the iPhone, which are really nice and I like a lot. This is the old style resistive type that you need a stylus and you really have to push hard. You can see the dots, there's kind of a grid, yeah, you can see that across the screen that makes up like the membrane. There's like, well, I guess two membranes and you've got to push the two together to make a connection. Um, so you've got your D-pad, which is, eh, it's, it's all right. Four buttons, power, um, menu, sound and pause buttons. On the, actually, we'll have a look at the side. We've got two cartridge ports, which is cool. Because if you, you, you know, you can carry it around and have two cartridges in it at the same time and select which one you're going to play without necessarily having to have a pocket full of cartridges. Um, and it runs on, if I can open it, for AA batteries. I haven't actually found out what the battery life is like because I haven't run it long enough to flatten the batteries. Um, and there is a reason for that. Let's turn it on, because there are some interesting features. Sound quality is not one of them, because it sounds... Excuse me, I have to swear, I know some people don't like it, but too bad. It sounds fucking awful. <laughs> that's... that's... Yeah. I have to really make that really, really clear. It, it really sounds bad. So you've got assorted um, icons here that you push with your doofer. Um, yeah, insert game cartridge, because I haven't got a game cartridge in. You've got a, what is it? Phone book. And you can put all the phone numbers of your friends and family in it, because you really need that, because your mobile phone doesn't have one, does it? Wait, yes it does. And you can't phone them on this. So, um, I suppose, 97, were there mobile phones? Yes, I had one in 97. There was, uh, I don't know what the purpose of this is, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to read this backwards so I can get back to the start. Yeah. Uh, I've dropped my stylus. Right, uh, calendar. Ugh. Yeah, it's 2008 or something. Hmm. Uh, we've got a game of solitaire. Oh, there's a calculator. Yeah, I guess you, you do this with your... Yeah. Okay. That's kind of useful. You know, if you're out and about, you've got your Gamecom in your bag or your... You don't exactly need a suitcase to carry it, but you know, you wouldn't have it in your pocket. It, it might be useful. 
Uh, what's this? Can't actually... High scores. Okay, that's cool, yes. So it will tell you the high scores of all the games that you've been playing, um, if you've been playing any. Uh, it will even keep the high scores of the ones that you've loaded the cartridge, launched the game but not played it because it, you didn't like it. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So that's, that is quite good. I like that. I can't knock it. And you've got a game of Solitaire built in there as well. Whoa. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm rubbish at Solitaire and I tend to forget the rules and have to ask Andrea how to play it each time I want to do it. And then I remember and I play it and I lose. But there you go. It's, it's nice to have stuff like that built in. Um, so what... Why do I hate this? Why, why do I think this is so bloody appalling? Um, it is twofold, really. The, the fact that the touch screen is fairly unresponsive doesn't matter. I could get past that. I like the fact that they've tried to do something other than just make another Game Boy. The fact that they had a black and white screen in 97 when, like, I, I'm not sure exactly when the Game Boy Color came out, but black and white in 97 was... Very old hat, very, very old technology, and didn't really cut it. Um, but I could get by that. The problem is the screen refresh rate. If you have anything moving at any speed on this, it's unplayable. There are links to the games down there. I'm not going to just stick a game in here and try and show you now. I've done gameplay videos. There's a playlist. Link down there. I may even put an annotation. Um, as soon as anything moved on, you, if you, th uh, if you've played an old classic original Game Boy, the one with the kind of greenish screen, you will know that when things started moving rapidly, they blurred a bit. This is ten times worse. If things start moving, they virtually disappear. Never mind being smeary; they just you can't see them, and um, the nature of games being what it is, things tend to move. I've, I've got a, a racing game on here, it's shocking, but more amusing, I've got Defender on here, I've got the Williams Arcade Classics, and, you know, Defender, Robotron, things move quickly, um, and the end result is laughable. I don't know if there are any... well, there are one or two games on here that are described as being quite good, um, there's a thing called Lights Out that I, I, I don't know what the hell is going on with that. Some people say it's good. There's a um, Wheel of Fortune. I don't know a thing about that either. So um, some people say they're quite good. They're not my cup of tea because I don't do puzzles. And puzzle games is probably what this thing would be best at. And card games, Solitaire is probably going to be the guest, best game on it of the kind of thing that I would play. <sighs> But it, it, it's absolutely crippled by the screen, to the point that you put a game in it, you try and play it, and you, you're just like, what the hell, I am playing this, I'll go and read a book or something, it'll have a better frame rate. Um, crippled, absolutely. Um, there are other handhelds with less processing power, um, less features, less um, original thinking in the design. I think that the, the thinking behind it, the idea, is fantastic. If they'd done it properly, it would be great. But this screen is so bad, so unbelievably, shockingly, bloody awful, that it renders it useless. Um, this is a great doorstop. You wouldn't want to play games with it. Um, I don't know. Give it to a young child and let them stick it in the front of a VCR or something, just just for giggles. But don't try and play, play games on it, because <laughs> you'll pull your hair out. Yeah, but I'm, I'll tell you what, I, I still buy games for it when I see them, um, because I'm like that. I like some things because they're so bad. I knew this was bad when I bought it. I knew the games would be bad when I bought them and if I see any more at a nice cheap price I will buy them because I get an amount of amusement out of some things being really awful. <laughs> there it is. That is the uh, Tiger Electronics Gamecom.
Uh, yeah. I couldn't actually tell you what this would cost. They're, they're, they're pretty cheap. Some people try and sell them for quite a bit, saying rare, but you know how that goes. Worth a fiver? Yeah. Worth 15 quid? If you're just in it for, for giggles, yeah. But if you want something to play games on, don't bother. I almost forgot. Thank you for watching.